Spring ball is starting all over the country, and staffs are officially locked in for the most part, heading into the 2024 season. Hello, I am Dave Shuate, the host of Mock 10 Sports, coming at you from the SEC unfiltered platform. That being said, most people, when they think of good coaching staffs, just think of the 11 on-the-field coaches. They forget about the strength and conditioning staff, which obviously they're with the players more than anybody. The recruiting staffs who help on board are the kind of the first people, face, initial faces of the program for these prospects. The nutrition staff go out, get groceries for them so they can cook themselves a healthy meal. They know how many calories, what stuff they need to get in, the good stuff to get into their body to fuel themselves to perform at their highest peak on game days. And even the operation staff who get some to and from games, schedules meals, goes about their day-to-day -day schedule and those systems like teamwork, stuff like that. They All these different departments that assist in running a major college football on an annual basis. It's not just the 11 on field, like I said. It's it's everybody. The whole program, starting from the head coach all the way down to the lowest student assistant, if we want to be honest. But one of the best ways to judge a coach, I was always told when I was in the industry, was to break it into three categories. I'm actually going to give Mike Vollmer a longtime administrative assistant in college football at Michigan under Bo Schimbeckler, Michigan State under Nick Saban and Bobby Williams, and at Alabama under um, Nick Saban, and then back at Michigan with Brady Hope. But breaking down those three categories, how good of a ball coach he is, obviously he's one, obviously it's an obvious, his ability to recruit another one, talent acquisition, we'll talk about that in a minute, and what were his relationships like with his players, and not just his players, that's key, and his fellow staff members. Again, it's always the classic cliche of people don't really care until they, uh, people don't, people aren't really going to listen to you until they know much how they, until they know how much you care. You, you know what I mean? So I feel like you got to be a relationship person. You got to have, you got to understand people as your players are dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. And also you got to understand how to work with your fellow staff members. So I took these three categories, tweaked it a little bit and put a grade one through five on each category for all 16 teams, staffs, programs, whatever you want to call it, heading in to the 2024 season, 2024 spring, as you would want to stand on March 4th today. Now, you may ask, how did I tweak these categories, Dave? Well, I'm here to tell you. The three categories for this exercise. First, coaching ability slash development. So coach ability, the max you can get out of your player, can you get him to hit his total ceiling? Does the staff from top to bottom, as we stand on March 4th, do that? development. I know in today's time, it's tough to develop. First, the players don't stay. They don't stay to develop. They don't stay in a system to be a guy in the next two or three years to take over. And then the coaches, probably lifespan of a program right now, about two years. So it goes both ways. The players don't stay and the coaches don't stay. And then the next category that'll be judged by talent acquisition recruiting stands for itself. What kind of ball players, what kind of talent can you bring in? And then finally, I'm going to give a grade for the support staff. I mentioned those people, the strength and conditioning staff, it's with them nonstop, the recruiting staff, the operations staff, the nutrition staff, even video staff. Well, we may bring somebody up about that. And I'm going to grade them one through five with one being poor, two being unsatisfactory, three being average, four being very good, five being Excellent. I'm going to tell you, we don't have any fives. The highest we have, as you can probably guess, that team is an average of 4.5. So remember, I'm going to give three grades off coaching ability slash development, talent acquisition slash recruiting, and then finally, the last category, support staff. One through five, average it up, divide by three. That will be your grade. But let's get to it. One through 16 in order of the average grade. The Georgia Bulldogs coming in one. No surprise to anyone that just doesn't totally just live – under a rock, yet Georgia coming in, ability to develop uh, 4.5. Got to go 4.5. I mean, Glenn Schumann been there since the beginning. Tavares Robinson, T-Rob there now. Will Muschamp now in an analyst position. Kirby Smart, obviously. Mike Bobo at the offensive coordinator position. Todd Hartley at the tight ends position. My guy, Chidero uzo Deribe at outside linebacker, does a fantastic job. They, they, The top players they get in, Nine times out of 10, which is why they're 4.5. Nine times out of 10, no one's perfect. Most of these guys reach their ceiling, their highest potential. Talent acquisition, I'm going to give the Bulldogs a five. They, after Alabama now, they're a five. They get who they want. Majority of the times when people be, what about Caleb Downs? They missed on him twice. Well, you're going to miss. Again, it's always an eight to nine, eight out of nine, ten, eight out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times kind of deal. But we don't have to go into much here. Five here, support staff. 
recruiting, they don't invest a lot in the salary pool from a standpoint. But they got some guys like James Ellis there do a good job. A Ron Corson, longtime trainer, done a phenomenal job. Their strength coach, Scott Sinclair, has done a phenomenal job. I think Kirby was kind of on the fence with him initially, but he's kind of started to become the face of that program. Adam Ray on the special team side does a phenomenal job. So Georgia, from top to bottom, well, old machine. I don't have to tell you that unless you, like I said, you've been living under a rock. We don't have to go into detail about Georgia. But after calculating that, the coaching ability development, 4.5, talent acquisition, recruiting, 5, support staff, 4, average comes out to be a 4.5 on a 5.1 through 5 scale. So Georgia elite, just giving you a hint, this is the only above 4 team we have here. Come in second. Some of this is funny because it surprises me how I would think of just off the top of my head. But Texas, the Texas Longhorns coming off a playoff appearance in Steve Sarkeesian's third year. Coaching ability development. Give me a 4-0. Give me a 4-0 on the one through five scale. Again, you got Sark, who obviously calls it his right-hand guy, A.J. Milwee, Kyle Flood of the offensive line. On defense, Pete Kwiatkowski does a phenomenal job of there. Blake Gideon, former player there. Talent acquisition recruiting. I mean, they finished, I believe, in the top – Seven in the recruiting rankings the last three years, the top two or three in the SEC on a regular basis, just off the top of my head. They're bringing in the elite players there, and they're coaching, develop them, get in, into a system that helps them win in the portal. I mean, A.D. Mitchell did it. They're using the guys like Xavier Worthy, Worthy who can take the top off of defense. B. John Robinson, they helped out. I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job at Texas of coaching guys up, developing them. Then talent acquisition, I gave a four as well. But moving to support staff. We don't talk about this one, remember? We don't talk about this one. I'm going to give it a 3.7. we got Tory Becton, the strength and conditioning coach, coming from Cal. doing a phenomenal job. If you've seen the way these Texas Longhorns' bodies have transformed, you should say, over the past three years, you would see it. Taylor Searles does a phenomenal job running the on-campus recruiting department over there. One of the bright females in the industry. Brandon Harris just per got promoted to general manager. Um along with some other recruiting staffers over there. I think they do a good job from top to bottom. Gave them a 3-7, maybe a little lower than people thought. Thought it was a above average. I think losing Billy Glasscock at that GM position brought it down a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how Brandon Harris does there. So I gave it a 3.7. You average up the coaching ability development at 4.0, talent acquisition recruiting at 4.0, and just below that support staff 3.7. That averages out for a 3.9. That's the second highest in the SEC. Moving over. Here it is, right off the bat, the, another new kid on the block in the SEC, Oklahoma. Brent Venables and the boys, coaching ability development. I gave it a 3-7. Brent Venables, great developer on the defensive side of the ball. I think Cody C. J. Vila does a really good job. Georgia background. On the offensive side of the ball, Joe John Finley does a really good job over there, in my opinion. I think he does a phenomenal job with – his, what's he, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, co C tight ends. I worked with him at Texas A&M. Great guy. Emmett Jones, good developer. We'll get to him in just a minute. Seth Luttrell, former head coach at North Texas. Offensive coordinator, does a good job with quarterbacks. DeMarco Murray, running backs. Um, I think they do a good job. Ben, Bill Bendenball, done a phenomenal job. He's been at Oklahoma for a long time developing guys. Uh, from a talent acquisition recruiting standpoint, you just heard me mention wide receiver coach Emmett Jones. 4.0. They're bringing in talent. They're doing a good job over there in recruiting. But here's where they drop a little bit to me. The support staff is a 3-7 to me. And the, the main reason why it's getting pulled up is because strength and conditioning coach Jerry Smith, Schmidt has done a phenomenal job. Schmitty been at Florida with Bob, with Steve Spurrier. Bob Stoops brought him over originally with Oklahoma. Went to a &M with Jimbo Fisher. That's how I know him. Um, recruiting staff a little bit. They're a little undermanned. It's not their fault. They're one of the lower, uh, bot, I should say, least paid recruiting staff in, in the SEC now. They don't have the bodies these other teams do. When I say bodies, like a lot of employees. Like you look at Auburn. Auburn's got like 15 people in recruiting. I think Oklahoma's got four or five full-time people. So they need to get caught up from a support staff standpoint. But, so I gave them a 3.7 with Jerry Schmidt, the strength and conditioning coach, raising that level up just a bit. So that average comes out to be a 3.8 for the Sooners. That's good for third in the SEC. So you got two out of the first three teams, which, again, these numbers shocked me. I was just off doing it off the top of my head um, last night. Texas at two at 3.9, Oklahoma at 3.8. Moving on, this one shocked me a little bit. Auburn coming in at fourth, coaching ability development coming in at 3.5. I think for the Auburn Tigers, solid coaching staff there. Obviously, Hugh Freeze can do it. Derek Nix, I think, is going to help. Uh, Hugh Freeze feels real comfortable with him. DJ Durkin, talk about him all you want, off the field stuff. Good defensive coordinator, good football coach. I think Charles Kelly does a good job. Um, 
Josh Aldridge, yeah, Ken Austin, ah, Marcus Davis, a little bit of a young cat. I don't know. Wesley McGriff, been around the NFL a lot, has a lot of football knowledge. And Jake Thornton, ah, okay, okay. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I, I told you, I'd be honest with you here. Uh, the coaching staff leaves a little bit to be desired, just just, just a little bit. Um, so I just want to talk about that. Talent acquisition recruiting 4.0. This is Hugh Freeze's strength. You saw it with the wide receiver pool he brought in in the 24 class. I mean, they got an army of a recruiting staff. Recruiting talent acquisition, Auburn's going to get it done. If they can get on the same page, we'll talk about support staff here in just a minute. But I think that staff does a good job recruiting. They're honing in. It'll be the best recruiting Overall coaching staff, 1 through 11, that they've had in a long time. Support staff, you know, 4.0. Will Redmond now is GM, did a really good job. Coach Stadzinski over there um, in the strength and conditioning, over there with Hugh Freeze at Liberty, he does a phenomenal job. And nutritionist here, Danielle Gillen, I hear, is really good, does a really good job with the players. They support staff, they got an army over there. They got a ton of people in on-campus personnel, that um, and J- Jesse Stone, I'm considering him in the support staff. He's an offensive analyst. Uh, and Darren Hiller, offensive line analyst, I think he does a really good job uh, kind of not holding Jake Thornton's hand. That's not a good way. But guiding him to being the best offensive line coach he can be. So going through Auburn staff, there's a lot of people. It's a big staff. I was really impressed. I was really impressed with this Auburn overall staff, more so than I thought. So the coaching ability development, 3.5. Talent acquisition recruiting, 4.0. Uh, and support staff for it. That, that came up to a 3-8. Some people are going to be like, what? Some people have cr- criticized this offer staff. I even shocked myself here a little bit after doing the average. That's just what the numbers say. Moving on to Ole Miss. Coaching ability development. I think Charlie Weiss and Lane Kiffin got something going on right now. I mean, I, a bit, again, a big portal heavy team, but they get the most out of it. And I think they're set up for success. We talked about it a lot in 2024 heading in. I think coaching ability development, 3.7 is what I would give the Rebels heading into this one. I think 3.7. Question mark with Brian Brown. I think John Garrison does a good job within that scheme. Randall Joyner does a good job. A young defensive line coach, a lot of energy to get the most out of those guys. I think Wes Neighbors, former player at Alabama, handles the safeties. He's a good developer, has a lot of knowledge sitting there in the room with Nick Saban. I've worked with Jake Schoonover before at special teams. Real attention to detail guy, will be organized. Kevin Smith, big-time player at UCF as a running back. Players listen to him, brought in Quinshot Judkins. He's done it before. Uh, and like I mentioned, Charlie Weiss Jr. does a good job there. From a talent acquisition recruiting standpoint, you may not agree with the portal additions. You may want to go high school route more, but it is what it is. I gave him a 4.0. They brought in the best portal hall. They're in Ohio State, arguably, uh, of anybody in the country. So I've got, got to give it a 4.0. Then support staff, 3.5. I like guys like Tom Luke, guys that are Ole Miss guys, have their roots here, know the lay of the land around the city of Oxford and Ole Miss. They know what to do. Those guys like that are important. Then you got the recruiters, guys from Mississippi. Kelvin Bolton, guy from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, played at Southern Miss. True kind of, quote, unquote, as Ole Miss people would say, SIP guy. Does a really good job off the field helping be a part of most of those relationships. Uh, Alex Collins, another guy in the personnel world, does a really good job. So I think Ole Miss has got a really good support staff. They lost Austin Thomas. That brought him down a little bit. So I gave him a 3.5 there. So coaching ability development, 3.7. Talent acquisition recruiting, 4.0. Support staff, 3-5 on average, 3.7. Rebs are up there. Some people aren't real high on that coaching staff, but going through it again. Ole Miss and Auburn were probably the two that I was like, huh, just off the top of my head, I, without really d- digging deep into these numbers, putting them into this formula, I wouldn't have think I liked them as much. But I do. I do. A lot of these support staff, talent acquisition, it's fun stuff to go through. And going over, though, to the Lone Star State, Texas A&M, Mike Elko and the boys, Coaching ability development, I gave it a 3.7 here. Obviously, Mike Elko, I worked with him at Texas A&M, one of the better developers, good football mind, just smart human being. He's a uh, he's an Ivy League guy, smart guy. Trooper Taylor, associate head coach, running backs coach, been around the block in the SEC back in his Tennessee days, was with him at Duke. Jay Bateman, kind of a guy I'm on the fence with. Who's going to be calling this defense, Mike Elko or Jay Bateman? Nah, that would sway my opinion a little bit. Colin Klein always liked what he did it. Kansas State, I feel like they got the most out of the talent they had at Kansas State. Did a good job of Will Howard. Jordan Peterson, my guy, JP, worked with him at Kansas. Phenomenal guy. Texas A&M, he's an ag. Uh, Co-DC, defensive backs, really knowledgeable guy. You can tell talking to him. He cares, has a really good relationship with his players. Former Bama wide receiver coach, Holloman Wiggins, eh, has some question marks on recruiting. Think he's a decent um, uh, developer. 
Ishmael Artside, defensive backs coach, good guy, goes and gets a lot of talent. Adam Cushing, run game coordinator, offensive line. Patrick Doherty, going across the board from that standpoint. Sean Spencer, coach chaos, has done a good job before. But again, I gave that a 3.7. Talent acquisition recruiting. I'm going to go with 3.7. Going to 3.7 here. I think guys, this is where I go back to my guys like Ishmael Artside. They do a good job bringing guys in. It has that Miami roots. Randomly anyway, enough, they've gotten some guys out of Miami there. I think Jordan Peterson will be good there bringing some guys in. Trooper Taylor will be uh, another uh, valuable piece from the coaching staff, 1 through 11, bringing them on from that standpoint. And then support staff. I go with 3-7. I think Alan Goday, uh, Derek Miller, and them do a good job in the recruiting department, being thorough, having a plan. Um, Tommy Moffitt down there in the strength and conditioning room down there. I think he kind of old school guy. Bring that little bit of a lunch bell attitude. I think under Jimbo, they, they talked about that, doing the things right. By the love, family, attitude, toughness, stuff like that. But I think now you got a tough-minded guy mixed with another tough-minded, smart guy like Mike Elko. Uh, I think that's a good mix. The strengthening of the training staffs there. You have my guy Craddock, who uh, is kind of a sports analytical, sports science guy, does a good job there. I think it's a 3-7. So I think it's a 3-7 across the board. Coaching ability development, 3-7. Talent acquisition, recruiting, 3-7. Support staff, 3-7. On average, we don't have to do the math, guys. It's a 3-7. Next, and you wonder why you may have not heard their name because there's a lot of question marks, a lot of mystery in this league with this staff. It's the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coaching ability development, like 4-0. I've said it ever since the hire. I think maybe before Ben Grubb left, uh, this could have been one of the better coaching staffs from top to bottom just from an X and O developed standpoint. Kalen DeBoer's won everywhere he's been. He's gotten the max out of everything. Freddie Roach. Uh, development, I think, would be a question mark. Missed on some guys like Peter Woods in recruiting down the stretch. In-state guys going to another school out of state at Clemson. Can't happen. We'll, but, again, this is coaching. Um, excuse me. I, I, I get on these rants with these staff sometimes because I know a decent bit about them. Jamarcus Shepard, I think he's a developmental guy. Does a really good job. Robert Gillespie does a good job. Kane Womack, former South Alabama coach, D.C. now. Nick Sheridan, sharp guy. Under the radar guy. You got to keep an eye on Co-D.C. Colin Hitchler. Does a really good job. I worked with Mo Linquist at AM, another bright guy, former Buffalo head coach. Brian Ellis from Georgia Southern, Chris Kapalovic coming over from Baylor, and then C Rob, Christian Robinson, who I worked with at Georgia. Young guy, brings a lot of energy, real positive guy. I like really good football mind, player development guys, player relationship guys here. So that's why I gave it a 4 0. That's why I gave it a 4 0. Talent acquisition recruiting, it's a little lower because I think we've got to see it. 3 3. Went with a 3-3. Not because it can't be done. I just haven't seen it done. So I went a little lower. Support staff, a little bit 3-7 here. A little different than Alabama's ever had. So that'll be an adjustment. They have some more mouthpieces. Guys like Courtney Morgan, Aaron Hodges. A little bit more mouthpiece than they are personnel. Where I think Bob Welton, Daniel Bush are more on that side of things. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think that could be an interesting mix. Um Ellis Ponder, obviously associate AD, was Nick Saban's right-hand guy, ops guy, JT Summerford. They do a really good job there. Ashley Kimball and them do a really good job from the operations recruiting side. But how it'll be married with guys like Bob Welton who've been in the NFL with more of the mouthpiece type guys, Courtney Morgan, Aaron Hodges, guys like that. That'll be interesting how that marriage, that relationship goes. So that's why it could have been a 4-0, brought it down to a little bit of 3.7, just like I did with the talent acquisition recruiting standpoint from a 3.3. Not that they, they, they can't work together, it won't work, or they can't bring in talent. It's just I haven't seen it, so I brought it a little lower. I'm not going to overpromise, under deliver, if that makes sense. So from a coaching ability development, 4-0, talent acquisition recruiting, 3-3, support staff, 3-7. That averages out to be a 3 Six, so just under all our three seven teams right there between Ole Miss and Texas A&M. So we got Alabama coming in at three point six. Then right with them, Todd, LSU coming in at three six right there as well. Coaching ability development, I gave a four zero as well, just like I did with Alabama. But again, I thought Brian Kelly in the offseason upgraded his coaching staff, brought in Blake Baker after getting rid of Madhouse, promoted Joe Sloan and Cortez Hankton to offensive coordinator. Frank Wilson, Mr. Louisiana, had to keep him there. Brad Davis, offensive line coach, does a good job. Bo Davis, I think one of the best defensive line coaches. Uh, Kevin Peoples as well, edge rusher, bringing edge rushers coach, bringing him over from Missouri. I think that's a really good defensive staff. Corey Raymond maybe lost his touch a little bit, maybe lost his secret stuff, but he's still a veteran in the league. Been at LSU, been at Florida last year. Jake Olson, safeties coach. Slade Nagel, special teams coach. Uh, Austin Thomas, senior associate AD. But we'll get to that here in a minute. But LSU's coaching staff, I think 
they got a better coach staff. I mean, they brought in, they brought it back a couple guys. They let go in 2021, but I think they got it right this time. I like, I've said it before. I don't like LSU's interior, their defensive line. If you listen to all these shows I do, you're probably, this guy says this every time. But I think the coaching staff between Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples is there. They couldn't have got any better. So I think it's a 4-0. Talent acquisition recruiting, probably a little lower than people even think. 3.3. I say this because they haven't got the defense right. Didn't get the secondary right ever on both years. Brian Kelly's first year or second year. The interior of the defensive line. I know they got a spring portal, but there's only two interior scholarship defensive tackles. Jacoby and Guillory and Jalen Lee, that can't happen. So, I mean, they finished in the top five, done a good job in the state of Louisiana, but everybody does that at LSU. That's not that difficult at LSU. And LSU people may be mad about that, but 3-3 three, three, because I see some holes in that roster going into year three. Someone's got to take blame for that. Support staff, 3-5. I think getting Austin Thomas, who's been at LSU now for what, three or four? This is third or fourth stint. Um, they do a good job. He does a good job, has an organization, has a plan. Um, I think Preston Tiffany, young cat, they hired from Ole Miss and personnel will do a good job. Uh, and they have some mouthpieces too, like Sherman Wilson, relationship guy, maybe on Twitter a little too much, but relationship guys that I think kids gravitate towards has a close relationship with Frank Wilson. I hear J.R. Belton does a really good job there. Uh, but I think their support staff is solid there. Yeah. But I had to, but I had to give it a little bit of a I'm trying to think too and go down the list. I mean eh, they have some former players. I'm looking at the staff here earlier. I'm just sorry, I'm just going back through it now. I think guys oh, I think guys like Scott Kuhn, I've heard doing a good job. Uh, overall, it, it'll be interesting. Can all these people work together from a support staff standpoint? So I gave it a three five. So when you talk about coaching ability, development four oh, talent acquisition, recruiting three three, support staff three five, averages out to be a three six. So Alabama and LSU coming in with the same score there. Moving on though, Missouri coaching ability development three five. I think I gave it a three five there. Uh, I thought. Eli Drinkwood's done a pretty good job of replacing coaches. He really has. Like Kirby Moore, OC, is a good football coach. Eric Link, good special teams coach. Curtis Looper does a good job. Jacob Peeler. How will that defensive coordinator hire be, though? That'll be key. Corey Batoon, coming over from South Alabama. How will that be? But so far, I gave it a 3-5. Talent acquisition recruiting, I got to go with a 3-5 as well. I mean, some of these Missouri State laws for NIL has helped, but they've gotten guys like Luther Burden, Mookie Cooper, came back. He's a Missouri kid. So they they kept all their top kids in for the most part. Got them on bounce backs at time, but talent acquisition, it's been as good as it's ever been. I got to give it a three, five. Some people may say not, why not four? Let's see how the trenches kind of do here. That's what I kind of hold back for. And then support staff. I think Ryan Trichel, um does a really good job there in recruiting uh, for the most part. Uh, I, I mean, I think overall, I think Andy Lutz is a good football op person to, from, that, from that standpoint. Malcolm Askew, young cat, played at Auburn. Uh, Jared Russell over there does a really good job. I think they, Victoria Adams, assistant director, recruiting operations, does a really good job. Um, overall, that's why I said I would give it a 3-5. So, again, 3-5 across the board. Don't have to do the math. Averages out to be a 3-5. My question for Drake will be, what is that? Again, I think Corey Batoon will be key here on how this is. Because remember, I'm not totally hook, line, and sinker sold to Missouri life. Last year, the 11 win season, while great, beat Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. That was their one of their better seasons ever. That was his first winning season at Missouri. Keep that in mind. So how this defensive coordinator hires going, replacing Blake Baker will be key. They're doing it in talent acquisition. I think the support staff's good enough to get it done. We'll see. 3-5 across the board. Speaking of 3-5, we got, a, we got three more teams that are 3-5 teams. Tennessee. Coaching ability development, 3-7. I mean, Josh Heupel, call it what it is. His system works. They usually put up points. I think Josh Heupel does a really good job. Uh, Joey Hazel does a really good job from understanding Josh Heupel's system. Um, I think D.C. Tim Banks be interesting there. I think Mike Eckler, real good energy special teams coordinator. I love Rodney Garner. I think he's one of the better developments. William Ng, they got from Alabama, linebackers coach. Eh, Willie Martinez, ah. To be determined, I, I don't know, to be determined. It's one guy I'm not high on from a development standpoint. And then I think from a recruiting talent acquisition standpoint, 3-2, uh, I think you got some guys, uh, how many, how do they, Glenn Ellerby, I think they miss a little bit on the offensive line at Tennessee at times. I think a little bit more system. They got to start winning up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. I trust Rodney Garner to get it done. 
can they consistently recruit top guys on the defensive side of the ball? That's my question there. I think support staff 3-7. I like guys like Billy High. Uh, Brandon Lawson does a really good job. Scott Altizer is a good hire for them and their director for recruiting football operations. I hear Jake Bresky, director of player personnel, one of Hypo's right-hand guys from his days back in Missouri, does a really good job. Um, overall, it's a, it's a Trey Johnson, I'm going down the names here. Um, Steven Ruzik, personnel guy, been around. He does a really good job. So I think overall their support staff across the board, 3-7. I think it's tied for just as good as their coaching staff is. It's just can the overall mixture of – I'm sure they're identifying guys with Brandon and Billy there in recruiting, Billy Hobb, Brandon Lawson. But can they go close – do they have closers on Tennessee's staff? That's the recruiting talent acquisition part, why it's over. After the coaching ability development, 3-7, talent acquisition, recruiting 3-2, support staff 3-7, averages out to be a 3-5. So they're – they're tied with Missouri. Next, Todd, call me crazy. I may get booed out of the building for this one. Florida, coaching ability development, 3-5. People are like, no way, Dave. All Florida just had their third straight losing season. Two with Billy Napier. No way. I don't really hate their coaching staff, I'm being honest. I just think timing's been weird there. Billy Napier, good football coach. Rob Sell maybe has too much say in the whole matter, but I think he's a good off the line coach. Austin Armstrong, young cat, maybe got thrown into the SEC too soon. I think Ron Roberts. They can mesh, get along. That could be a solid hire for them. Russ Callaway, a good football coach. Um, overall, I don't think they're a bad fo- football coach staff. I think they got some real knowledgeable guys from the time I've been around. Talent acquisition, recruiting, 3-7. I, I think this is the highest category they in. They're bringing some guys in. It's just tough when you don't have any momentum on the field, and that's their fault, too, to end up closing these guys. That's the issue from that standpoint. So talent acquisition – I think they had some recruiters. I think it's a 3-7. I don't think it's that bad. Then a support staff standpoint. I think they have some legit people in there. I think Katie Turner's really good at her job. Mark Robinson from AM, chief of staff, really good people person, can really deal with it. Josh Thompson, director of football operations, worked with him at Texas AM as well. I think he does a really good job over there as well. I think he has his ducks in a row. I mentioned Katie Turner, Jacob LaFrance, the GM, does a really good job. Um then my guy who I know over there, Bird Sherrill, former NFL guy, does a good job. Chase Clark over there as well. Um, trying to make sure who else we got over here. Who else? My they, yeah, strength staff has been up and down a little bit. They got rid of Mark Hockey. Uh, they hired the Coach Fitzgerald guy. He went to Boston College. They brought in a new guy. Um, that'll be interesting. But overall, I mean, I saw Steve Spurrier took a shot at the numbers side of thing. They would have too many guys. But they have a good – they have a good staff. Overall for Florida, I'll sum it up like this. I think they have a good coaching staff. Just sometimes it's just not good timing. And until Florida gets some stuff off the field right, not with Billy Napier's staff, but administratively, it's going to be tough to anyone to win there. But coaching ability development, 3-5. Talent acquisition recruiting, 3-7. Support staff, 3-5. Averages out to be a 3-5. Tied with Missouri, Tennessee. And then finally, our last 3-5 team, the Kentucky Wildcats and Mark Stoops. Coaching ability development, 4-0. Don't know how you could argue that. Usually gets the most out of what he has there. Staff's really good. I really like the staff for where they're at. Vince Merrow does a really good job. I like Brad White. I like the hire of Bush Hamden, the office coordinator from Boise State. Jay Bullware, I think, does a really good job as well. So I give it a 4. They, they've been doing a really good job. Talent acquisition recruiting, 3. Could probably be a little better. Could probably be a little better, for being honest. Uh I wanted to give that hire, but it's one of my lower takes on recruiting there. It's 3-0. I feel like they could do a little bit better from an off-the-field standpoint. Support staff, 3-5. I think it's a 3-5 staff. Uh, Daniel Braswell does a really good job on the on-campus side of recruiting. Always heard of good stuff about their director of equipment ops. I told you, people from the bottom student assistant to the head coach, that matters. Joe Danino does a good job in the equipment. Um, Christian Ferrio, I've heard of do good, done a good job in the video side of things. Performance dietitian Devin Haygood, I've heard. Kentucky is a good support staff. I like it. Guys, I'm creative coordinator. Jacob Nogger does a good job. So uh, Chase Hockey, the recruiting guy, does a really good job. Director of recruiting, general manager. I think they do a good job across the board at Kentucky. So coaching ability development, 4-0. Talent acquisition recruiting, 3-0. Support staff, 3-5. Averages out to be a 3-5 across the board. So they had four teams there at 3-5. We had Missouri, Tennessee, Florida, and Kentucky. People are going to get on me about the Florida one. I know it's going to happen. But then moving on to the last few here, we got the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Coaching ability development. Give me a 3-3. Three, three. 
Give me a 3-3. I like what Jeff Levy's going to do here. I like Coleman Hutzler, the D.C. linebackers coach. That will be interesting there. Matt Barnes, an Ohio State guy. David Turner, longtime SEC defensive line coach. Question a little bit on Cody Kennedy and Chad Bumpus. But a little to be determined. Cody Kennedy was under Sam Pittman's wing. What can he do out on his own? Chad Bumpus, former player at Mississippi State. What can he do? Heard some different things about him as well. Corey Bell does a solid job at corners. So I thought they'd be decent here. Uh, talent acquisition recruiting, 2.5. To be determined. To be determined there. Haven't really seen a lot. I think this score is one of the more, out of all the teams at a specific category, this is one someone could easily raise. So I, I hate, because this lowered t- Mississippi State's uh, total overall score. So we'll see how this goes. Then support staff at 3-7. I like the support staff here. I like Greg Knox, the interim head coach in his role. Jason Washington in a new player development role. Mark Votler, GM, one of the bright personnel guys. And this is one of my favorites here. Former Alabama running back. Was at Oregon for a while with Mario Cristobal and with Dan Lanning. Now head strength coach. Sean Williams does a phenomenal job. I like the support staff here. It's the highest grade at 3-7. So coaching ability development, 3-3. I like what Jeff, Jeff Levy and them are going to do offensively. We know that. Coleman Hutzler, I like it. Talent acquisition recruiting, to be determined. That's why it's lower, 2-5. Support staff, I like it, 3-7. I like the recruiting department. I like the strength and conditioning staff. That averages out to be three, an overall 3-1, 3-1. Moving to South Carolina, I think this has been the hindrance of Shane Beamer. Coaching ability development here. I don't think he's hired a great staff. Dow Loggins, I uh, so what Clayton White, surprise he got kept along. Uh, Joe DeCamelis, special teams guy, so uh, fine. Thought Sean Elliott, one of his better hires right there. I'm not totally against the Mike Fury hire at wide receivers coach after uh, James Coley left. Uh, Torian Gray, solid. Um, yeah, just it's just it's an okay staff. It's kind of like a group of five staff, we're being honest. Talent acquisition recruiting 3-0. I think they identified, do a really good job with Taylor Edwards. They just don't have a lot of closers. Like Montario Hardesty, I heard never could close, was a bridesmaid, was never the bride. They ultimately got rid of him. That's been Shane Beamer's problem. Guys like Clayton White, they're not good recruiters. Dow Logan's not a good recruiter. They identified, they have a good board. It's a good job by Taylor Edwards and his team in the recruiting department. They just don't have closers. Closers. There's a difference. Support staff, I just mentioned him, Taylor Edwards, 3-5. I think it's a 3-5. I think Taylor Edwards does a good job. Director of on-campus recruiting, Jessica Jackson, has been around it, done a good job. Clyde Wren knows a way uh, around the building, does a good job. I think they got a solid – I think they got a solid support staff. Luke Day does a good job in strength and conditioning. So you add that all up, coaching ability development, 2-7, lower end. Talent acquisition recruiting, ah, 3.0, lack the closers. Then the support staff, 3-5. 3-5, Taylor Edwards and them leading the way. Averages out to be a 3-0. Then the last two teams, you can probably guess it by uh, process of elimination. But the Arkansas Razorback, Sam Pittman, big year. I don't have to tell you. Coaching ability development, 3-5. I actually don't dislike this coaching staff, if I'm being honest with you here. I think Jimmy Smith, solid. Scott Fountain's gotten a lot better at special teams. Bobby Retrino, one of the better OCs out there. Travis Williams, who I've been with at UCF, is going to get a lot of player relationship development. Does a really good job. To really develop Tatum Bethune the year I was at UCF, who went on to be one of the better backers for Florida State these past two years. Marcus Woodson, a good developer. Deke Adams. I think they do a good job over there. I think they do a good job. Uh, recruiting, talent acquisition, 2-5. I think, they get, I think they started off hot. But, again, just like Florida, when people were already – these kids, social media, you get it so fast. They see all the headlines. They see all the tweets that Sam Pittman, Billy Napier aren't going to be there. That hurts teams like this in recruiting. I think it's a 2-5. It's kind of drifted off. They don't have a good recruiting department structure. It's been a revolving door. I think they've had like three in the last four years. Just no real plan. That starts at Sam Pittman. Then support staff. Not, not overall a great support staff, if I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I mean, it, it's it's really not. It's uh more – I mean, I think Pat Doherty does a good job – football chief of staff. But after that, I they've been so on and off. They're promoting within, somebody within to be their director of player personnel. Just not a lot going on. A very understaffed. I think their head of recruiting department doesn't even make six figures. They just don't invest in support staff roles. There. And some of it, they don't have the money. But still, I think outside of Pat Doherty, it's a little underwhelming support staff there. So overall, coaching ability development, 3-5 for the Razorbacks, really led by Bobby Vitrino and Travis Williams. Talent acquisition recruiting, 2-5. It could be better, but some of that's just the momentum, and that's their fault too, but it is what it is. Then support staff, 2-5. That averages out to be 2.8, good for 15th in the SEC. And then finally, 
the Vanderbilt Commodore is one of the toughest jobs in the league right now when you factor in the academic stuff and the NIL stuff that Clark Lee has to go through. But coaching ability development, 2-5, had to go get totally new coaches. Uh, I mean, he openly admitted it's kind of sort of bashing his coaches in the middle of the season last year. Like the players weren't getting developed. Coach is 2-5, okay. I mean, it, it, how much longer will he be? Jer former Minnesota coach Jerry Kills there. Town acquisition recruiting 2.0, so hard to get players there, keep them there, get them into school, 2.0. Support staff, 2.5. I think Barton Simmer Simmons, former rivals, 247 guy, does a really good job for them. Uh, also, another guy I was looking at, I think Andrea Kane, been there for a while, does a really good job. Earl Bennett in his player development role. You remember, former player uh, at former receiver there at Arkansas. Then Nick Valde Valdeseri, I've talked to him a few times, does a good job, brought him over from Notre Dame um, when Clark Lee was there. So, but I gave him a 2.5. So coaching ability development, 2.5. Talent acquisition recruiting, 2.0. Support staff, 2.5. Averages out to be a 2.3. But I enjoyed this exercise. I, I put my own formula together. I saw some people, I mentioned, saw Josh Pate do his own coaching staff ranking there. But he really did the one through 11 coaches, the head coach and the 10 assistants. I did all the way through. I did the, obviously the one through 11 coaches, support staff, ranked them how they did talent acquisition recruiting. And that as, as of today, March 4th. But once again, I wanted to go a little deeper than just your regular old coaching staff grades that you see elsewhere on social media and surf on the internet. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth. I think some of the other stuff is a little bit unresearched, lazy, because just those one through 11 coaches don't make the organization successful or not. It comes down to those other people in the building as well. So this list pulls back the numerous curtains and layers to break down how good of an overall staff, if you want to call it program, would be. You could say this is an overall program grade, if you want to be honest. But with that being said, tell me where I was right or wrong. Tell me where you I could agree, where I could get better coaching staff development, player acquisition, and the support staff grades. So I'd love to see it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know. Let me know. But remember, you can get all the SEC unfiltered content on the platforms below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you can get notified when we produce content, which is every day on all things SEC. Also, don't forget to head over to the website if you get some time. But again, thank you so much for tuning in, and we look forward to bringing you all things SEC on the SEC Unfiltered platform. You have a fantastic night.